Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Two women brutally killed in black magic rituals in India's Kerala, three arrested. Pakistan's ruling coalition making deep fake videos to smear me, claims PTI chief Imran Khan. And US slaps new sanctions on Taliban over treatment of women. And now for all the details. In a bizarre case of alleged human sacrifice, two women were brutally murdered in black magic rituals in India's southern Kerala state. Police said on Wednesday that three persons, including one woman, have been arrested for allegedly luring and killing the women. In a bizarre case of alleged human sacrifice, two women were brutally murdered in black magic rituals in India's southern Kerala state, police said on Wednesday. The women aged 52 and 49 were identified as two lottery sellers who were cheated by the main conspirator Shafi on the pretext of providing financial help but were taken to the house of a couple who along with him killed them. Shafi had made fake Facebook profile using the name of a woman and managed to convince the couple to offer the women as human sacrifices in order to improve their financial condition. The victims' bodies were cut into pieces and buried in the backyard of the house where the crime was committed. They were uh, given a false promise of a financial help. She was taken to the same house with the same couple. She was done to death and cut into pieces and buried. So both these cases, we have arrested all the three accused. We have remanded them to judicial custody and further investigation is on. A court on Wednesday sent the three accused to a 14-day judicial custody until October 26. False notions and fallacy guide the lives of illiterate people, mostly in India's rural areas, where superstitious people perform sacrifices of different kinds because of their religious beliefs. Authorities in India have stopped the production of cough syrup at a factory of Maiden Pharmaceuticals, a state minister said on Wednesday, after a WHO report said that the medicine may be linked to the deaths of dozens of children in Gambia. The minister said authorities inspected the factory near Sonipat town and found 12 violations of good practices. Indian authorities have halted production of cough syrup at a factory of Maiden Pharmaceuticals, a state minister said on Wednesday, after a World Health Organization report said that the medicine may be linked to the deaths of dozens of children in Gambia. Anil Vij, the health minister of India's northern Haryana state, said the authorities inspected a factory of the Maiden near the town of Sonipat and found 12 violations of good practices. He said production was ordered to be stopped immediately kendra aur haryana ke drug department ne iski joint inspection ki thi usme kafi kamiyan mili lagbhag 12 kamiyan usme mili unko madhya rakhte hue ab ye faisla kiya gaya hai ki iski total production band kar di jaye aur uska humne notice de diya hai the WHO said last week that laboratory analysis of four maiden products had unacceptable amounts of D-ethylene glycol and ethylene glycol, which can be toxic and lead to acute kidney injury. Gambian police in a preliminary investigation report said that the deaths of 69 children from acute kidney injury was linked to the India-made cuff syrups, which were imported via a US-based company. It is one of the worst such incidents involving drugs from India, often dubbed a pharmacy of the world. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan has accused the ruling coalition is making deep fake videos to malign him and his party to stop his revolution. Khan said that the time is near when he will announce a massive long march against the government. 
Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan on Tuesday claimed that the ruling coalition was making deep fake videos to malign him and his party. During a political gathering, Khan said political rivals had now resorted to doctoring his videos with the help of high-tech deception to incriminate him with the fake depictions in the video. He also referred to the recent audio clips leaked on the social and mainstream media and said that he will go to court for an inquiry into the audio leaks. Khan said that the time is near when he will announce a massive long march against the government. कि किसी ना किसी तरह ये मुझे और मेरी पार्टी को किसी तरह पब्लिक की नजर में गंदा करें और वो क्या कर रहे हैं गंदी गंदी वीडियो तैयार कर रहे हैं गंदी गंदी वीडियो वो डीप फेक वीडियोस मैं भी आपको दिखाऊंगा वो घर में बैठ के नई टेक्नोलॉजी के जरिए गंदी वीडियोस और फिर टेप्स लगा रहे हैं ऑडियो टेप्स Khan has been leading rallies since his dismissal as the Prime Minister in April to demand snap elections which the ruling coalition has rejected, saying voting will be held as scheduled later next year. Moving on, an official in Pakistan administered Kashmir has raised concern over the government's apathy to provide funds to reconstruct educational institutions that were damaged in the deadly earthquake in the illegally occupied region 17 years ago. He lamented that students are still forced to attend classes under open skies in several remote areas. Authorities in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently remembered the victims of the 2005 earthquake on the 17th anniversary of the deadly disaster. But a senior official of the State Earthquake Reconstruction and Rehabilitation Agency, Sarah Zahid Abbasi, has said, even after all these years, the reconstruction and other basic infrastructure projects have remained stalled due to lack of funds from the Pakistan government. There are around 2,000 projects, including 61 health centres that are stalled due to no funding, while more than 60,000 school students are still forced to study in over 1,500 shelterless schools, Abbasi said. Locals have long blamed that successive governments have only made big claims, but no groundwork has been done to reconstruct and rehabilitate the victims and it all seems a distant dream. और इसके लिए अगर ये फंड्स मायया हो जाएं तो हम चार पांच साल के अंदर ये सारे मंसूबा जात जिनकी तादाद कोई 2000 के लगभग है वो हम तकमील करके लाइन डिपार्टमेंट के हैंडओवर कर सकते हैं इसमें सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट बात ये है कि जो एजुकेशन सेक्टर है उसकी मारात की ताबीर जो है वो बहुत ही जरूरी है क्योंकि 1500 से ज़ वो जाहिर है कि लोग उससे मुस्तफीद हो सकते हैं, उससे एनरोलमेंट बढ़ सकती है, उसमें क्वालिटी ऑफ एजुकेशन बेहतर हो सकती है, क्योंकि इस वक्त जो हैं वो बच्चे शेल्टर लेस स्कूलों में। Locals say a complete overhaul is required, but the government pays no heed to the dilapidated infrastructure. They accuse they have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Islamabad that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. The United States has announced new sanctions against the Taliban, including restricted visas for the members of the group as punishment for their repressive treatment of women and girls in Afghanistan. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Afghanistan remains the only country in the world where girls are systematically barred from attending school beyond the sixth grade, with no return date in sight. The United States has restricted visas from being issued to current and former members of the Taliban, among other individuals, for repressing women and girls in Afghanistan. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken made the announcement in a statement on Tuesday on the UN's International Day of the Girl Child. As a grim example for more than a year, Afghanistan remains the only country in the world where girls are systematically barred from attending school beyond the sixth grade, with no return date in sight, Blinken said. 
After coming back to power in August 2021 following the withdrawal of US-led international forces, the hardline Taliban have barred girls from attending secondary school. The women's access to jobs has also been restricted, with a few exceptions, such as in the health sector. Moreover, they have made it compulsory for women to wear veil and be accompanied by a male family member when traveling. Meanwhile, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres also said that the continued exclusion of girls from school in Afghanistan is deeply damaging to a country that desperately needs their energy and contributions. Blinken in his statement called on other governments to join the US in taking similar actions and to continue to underscore a collective message that only a government in Afghanistan that protects the human rights of every individual could be considered legitimate. People in Bangladesh were hit harder by food and non-food inflation over the last two months, with the overall inflation surging to a 10-year high of 9.52% in August. The Bangladesh government released the collective data of two months on Tuesday, ringing alarm bells. Inflation in Bangladesh accelerated to 9.52% in August, the highest in 10 years, mainly driven by higher food prices, the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics reported as it released the data of two months together on Tuesday. Data showed that food inflation soared to 9.94% in August, the highest since April of 2012 and is slightly to 9.08% in September, Planning Minister M. A. Manan said. Non-food item inflation, however, increased to 9.13% in September from 8.85% in August, the data showed. Due to higher food prices amid uncertainties stemming from the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Manan said inflation has been on an upward trend over the past several months in Bangladesh. He stressed the need for bolstering food production domestically to rein in soaring food inflation. In June, the country unveiled a record about 70 billion US dollars national budget for the 2022-23 fiscal year starting in July and the government said it is committed to containing the rising trend of inflation by addressing inconsistencies between supply and demand. According to the budget proposal, Bangladesh is targeting an average inflation rate of 5.6% in the new fiscal year. Married women across India thronged markets for the advanced preparations of Karwa Chaut, a day ahead of the festival which will be celebrated on Thursday. This day is observed by women by observing fast for the long life and happiness of their husbands. Married Hindu women flogged markets in India's capital New Delhi on Wednesday for the advanced preparations on the eve of Hindu festival of Karwa Chauth, which is observed for the lifelong and happiness of husbands. Karwa Chauth falls on the fourth day after the full moon in the month of Karthik as per the Hindu solar calendar. On this day, women worship Lord Shiva and his wife Parvati. This year, it will be celebrated on Thursday. Women were seen getting henna tattoos on their hands, buying bangles, jewellery, sweets, new clothes and other festive items a day before day-long fasting without water or food. The one-day festival is mainly observed in parts of northern India. A large number of women were also seen shopping for the festival in Chhatarpur in central Madhya Pradesh state. Women celebrating their first Karva Chaut wear their bridal dresses and receive sargi offerings from their mother-in-laws. देखिए दो साल से तो हमारा कोविड गाइडलाइन का पालन करते हुए हम सभी बाजार आना जाना और ये सारी चीजें नहीं हो पा रहा था लेकिन बड़ा उत्साह है हम महिलाओं में और जो हमारा मनपसंद त्योहार करवा चौथ का रहता है जिसमें हम अपनी पति की लंबी आयु के लिए हम सभी बहनें ब्रेड रहते हैं तो इसके लिए आप देख रहे हैं कि बाजार में कितनी रौनक है Nowadays husbands have also started to practice the ritual of keeping the fast to reciprocate the feeling the fast is broken after moon gives its appearance. Women use the sieve to sight the moon, catch a glimpse of their husband and drink water. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.